street. Now, better get used to it. I've been made department chief. I'll never get used to it, Albert. Never get used to any of it or any of them. My Fuhrer, may I present Frau Speer? Indeed. You may. Certainly you may. And may I have the pleasure of bidding you a very good evening. Frau Speer. Good evening. Speer, why have you deprived us of your wife for so long? I have something that I must tell you. Your husband is going to erect buildings for me, such as have not been created for 4,000 years. Those clothes fit very well, don't they? Mr. Goebbels says her children have measles. You laugh. The deputy Führer mentions a back problem. You laugh. The field marshal tells us his wife just died. You laugh. Anything, everything that was serious or tragic was laughable. Why, Marguerite? Why? I suppose because I find everything and anything of no real importance next to the things that have been happening around us. There is something of real importance happening around us you seem to be totally unaware of. And I'd like you to take particular notice of the Romans and the Greeks left the substance of their civilization behind them in architecture. It still remains for all the world to see. It is important. Now, every day he's asking me to design the substance of the Third Reich in natural stone and not a brick. I intend to do exactly that. And I will not let you interfere. I met them. You wanted me to meet them. You'll want me to meet them again. I'll do that, too. I'll be polite. I'll talk to them. I'll even listen to them. But I never want to see them in my house. I won't ask them. If they come, I will leave. Agreed.
Come in. Oh, come in. Don't just stand there. I'm glad you dropped by. I had it on my calendar to ring you tomorrow. What have you got there? I would very much like your opinion, sir. Whatever happened to all those ideas of simple craftsmanship and architectonic expressiveness we discussed so often? I hope I've remembered and achieved some of that, sir. I've missed those discussions very much. A minimum of pomp is always the deciding factor. It's too flashy, way too flashy. That one's just plain tawdry. I really can't blame your friend Hitler for getting rid of his old friend Rome. Dysgenic disasters like Ernst Rome and his stormtroopers are really quite embarrassing for him now. And same problem here, pretentious. They've had their day, they've kicked in more than their share of faces, stomped on enough groins, and besides, it's time for Herr Hitler to get down to serious business with big business. And the army, of course, compounds the same problem. He picked you because you're respectable. Why did you pick him? Adolf Hitler can save Germany. Oh, I disagree. Adolf Hitler can ruin Germany, and he intends to do exactly that. He's an insatiably destructive man with delusions of grandeur. And he's going to look silly tromping around that big concrete tomb at Nuremberg wearing those big brown pants that don't fit him. Sooner or later, I'm sure he will find it quite impossible not to declare war on the whole world. Has he ever mentioned it to you? We never discuss politics. I'm not a political man. Then your decision to become a Nazi would appear to be somewhat frivolous. I'm not a Nazi. Oh, yes, you are. You are no matter what you tell yourself. You're a Nazi spear. A big, tall one with plenty of respectability. Yes, it's all showy. Nothing but show. You're more dangerous than the bullies in the brown shirts. You're more deadly than the layabouts and louts in the black pants at Sachsenhausen, who were waiting to teach me to be a national socialist. Cheap. You're worse than any of them, Spear. You understand what he's doing, where he's going. And this is blatant again. You just don't have the courage to resist him. By the way, I don't owe you a damned thing. <laughs> thinking. I... I want you to, to feel safe again. I want you to know that I love you. Forever. What a wonderful thing it is to have a son. What a wondrous thing you've done. And I promise you, we'll have our time together. No more interruptions. Caspian? Our Führer says a woman has her battlefield too. One, two, three, four, five fingers on the left hand. With each child she brings into the nation, Right hand. One, two, three, four, five fingers. She is fighting her fight on behalf of the nation. Left foot. One, two, three, four, five toes. The honor cross of motherhood is given to those who meet the quota of bearing four children into the Third Reich. One, two, three, four, five toes on the right foot. A bronze medal 
for more than four. This is a male child? A silver medal for more than... His eyes are blue? For more than eight children. Heil Hitler. The Führer has appointed me head of the unified police system. In that capacity, I shall be in charge of all security arrangements at Nuremberg. Um, Frau Speer is well? Oh, yes. Good. I can best ascertain what security problems to anticipate if you will provide me with the exact plans you intend to use. Of course. Um, Frau Speer, her name is Marguerite? Yes, it is. Frau Himmler's name is also Marguerite. Seven children, two sons, five daughters. A son is good, very good. President von Hindenburg has just died. I swear before God to give my unconditional obedience to Adolf Hitler. I swear before God to give my unconditional obedience to Adolf Hitler. Führer of the Reich and its people, Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces. Führer of the Reich and its people, Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces. And I pledge my word as a brave soldier to observe this oath even at the risk of my life. And I pledge my word as a brave soldier to observe this oath even at the risk of my life. Tell me about it. I want to know about it. It's only a theory right now. Tell me, right now. Well, iron, steel, all metals eventually become old, aged. So why don't we use cements and bricks? I'm hoping, I'm trying to devise a protectorate or even replaceable materials so that the deterioration is less rapid. As I say, it's only a theory. A thousand years? My Führer. A thousand years? Can you make a building last a thousand years? I hope to do that, my Führer. I pray you do that, my friend. Soon the whole world will know your work. What they will not know is that all of my building plans extend far into the future. I want someone who will be able to continue after my death with the authority I conferred upon him, Spear. I see you as that man. Germany has been the 
breakwater against the communist floods. And we will stand. This Germany will stand for the next thousand years. Famous man now, Herr Speer. I'm a thirsty man now. What can I get for you? <laughs> Same as his. Right away. Now, I want to extend my congratulations. I've heard, and so has she, that uh, Führer has told you to rebuild Berlin from top to bottom. Where did you hear that? <laughs> it's all over the city. It's supposed to be a secret. Oh. Well, is it true? Yes. The Fuhrer has commissioned me to start drawing plans for a whole new city. And uh, after it's finished? I'll take Marguerite for a trip around the world. Well, drop in and see me. Probably New York. You're leaving? When? I don't exactly know. And um, I don't think I'd say. Ever been to Blankenberg, Speer? There's a reformatory there. Boys 14 to 18. It's a strange place. No fences, no lock gates. But hardly anyone ever runs away no place to run. You'd think that there would be some kind of a, a natural instinct for freedom to, to run, to get out of the place. But there isn't. They say the kids lose their instinct right away. The system, the system makes them lose their instinct. Where did your instinct go? What? Not even an incredible. Dear God, Spear, the whole damn country is turning into one big Blankenberg. Carl, you always know what's happening. There's no news. Oh, well, oh, it's that business in Paris. Our third secretary there, von Roth. No, von Rath? Something like that. Was shot two days ago. He died last night. The killer was a Jew. A boy, 17. He just heard about his parents. They were being deported back to Poland from Berlin with a lot of others. The guards put them off the train at the border, and the Poles wouldn't take them back. A new law. It's very cold there this time of year. Swampy land, and no one's fault. They froze to death.
I shouldn't have taken the liberty. Frau Goebbels, believe me. It's quite all right. Haspia. No, 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 no. Don't go. Just yet. I should like to say that normally a woman in my position would be enraged with a doctor for his indiscretions. Normally that rage would be totally ineffective and normally I would bury myself in the task of raising my family. I, uh... I chose not to do that. Do you understand? Yes. This boy meant to shoot the ambassador. Instead, he hit this uh, von Rath. Von Roth? Whatever his name is. The, the third secretary. Incidentally, von Roth was under investigation by the Gestapo for pro-Jewish activity. It's a very unfortunate situation, all the way around. You will, you will find some piece of spaghetti on a you shoe, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and my final wish to you is that the new year of 1939 will bring your country and mine ever closer together. Signed, Benito Mussolini, Il Duce. Manicotti with a meat sauce, and some rosanias, and some spaghettis, and some raviolis, and some hell of a new year too, huh? Signed, the Big Papa from Roma. Admiral Horthy of Hungary, uh, King Carol of Romania, this one's from the Duke and Duchess of Windsor and Colonel Charles Lindbergh. And this one's from George Bernard Shaw and here, Neville Chamberlain. Ah, mm. indeed. Mr. Neville Chamberlain. Dear Mr. Hitler, may the new year bring the assurance of peace that both of our nations pray for so devoutly. Quite, quite, quite. And a little quiet, quiet. <laughs> My dear, would you please be so kind as to take your position with the photograph? I don't care. Come along, please. Please have a moment. Only take a moment. She's such a bad actress. Really uh, quite untalented. Who is such a bad actress? The Czechoslovakian slut. You've been sleeping with. Oh, which Czech? Happy New Year, Doctor Gerber. And to you, my dear. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Which Czechoslovakian slut would that be? Lida Barova, don't you remember? The one with the elephantine hips. I do wish you'd go and live with her and leave me and the children alone. Joey Lee. Magda, don't ever, ever call me Joey Lee in public. Doctor, if you please. Oh, yes, of course. Come well, it's been quite apparent to everyone tonight that Martin Bormann has replaced you. Day by day, minute by minute, second by second, he is moving closer to the Führer. And you are being moved farther and farther away. Eventually, you will be pushed out altogether. You are already excluded from the Ober Salzburg. Martin Bormann's there. Martin Bormann answers the telephone. Martin Bormann decides whether or not you can speak to the Führer. You must do something before it's too late. What must I do? You must reinstate yourself. Excuse me, just a second, for the photograph. Mm -hmm. Now? <laughs> Let's dance. Dancing brings out the best and the worst in a man. Who told you that? You did. Years ago. Why so sad? None of this is going to last. None of it. Your, your sensibilities, advantages, education. 
could become part of so evil a system. I, why did you become a Nazi, Speer? Adolf Hitler. Are you uh, anti-Semitic? Your uh, publicity. Albert Speer is a complete and clever liar. He says he didn't know about the exterminations. He knew all of them knew. Coming? No. Um, yes, wait. The decision to kill all of the Jews, the final solution, as it was called, was kept very private, very secret. It was only after the war that I heard of this final solution. And I have learned since that even in the SS, relatively few people were aware of it. Where'd you learn that? At my trial? It was in the evidence. What uh, few people are we talking about here? Top administrators, concentration camp commandants, logistics, guards, transport personnel. They were the only ones who knew about the exterminations. Outside of those Jews who took their clothes off and uh, walked into the gas chamber. <clears throat> At his trial, Speer accepted personal responsibility for all of his official acts. It was a skillful way to justify himself and the majority of Germans who put Hitler in power and supported him. And what do you have to say to that? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Speer cried mea culpa on the witness stand, loud and often. He did it to save his skin. He's not sorry for anything. I'm glad they convicted him. When they sentence him, I hope they sentence him to hang. He was worse than all of them. He knew better. Uh, what do you say to that? People expect me to offer justifications. But I can't. There's no apology or excuse I could possibly make. In all those years that you were... Uh... Hitler's personal architect. You were with him uh, nights and days. Uh, you traveled with him, ate with him, right there alongside him, right? All the time, building and planning. Yes. Yeah. Did you run across uh, any Jews along the way? No carpenters, uh, masons, plumbers? No. The Jews in the trades weren't allowed to work. It was the law. They lived on whatever money they had or private charity. Jews I knew were my students or my colleagues at the university. Well, uh, how'd you feel about the way that the students and your colleagues were being kicked around? By the time they were finally carried to the concentration camps, they, they were abstractions to me. It shames me to admit it, but I arranged my mind in such a way that I disappeared from my life and thoughts as if they never existed. You had quite a knack for arranging your mind. Mm -hmm. I'm a Jew. I know. Is that what shames you? No. It's the girl. It's the girl? What girl? Couldn't be any more than ten years old. She's very, very frightened. Mother's holding her. Speaks to her softly. The little girl tries hard, very hard, to hold back her tears. They were going to execute. Mother bends, goes down on one knee, says something to her, points to the sky. And the SS man says it's time to go. Mother takes her hand, and they both walk away to stand in line. 
halfway. The little girl looks back, trying to find her father, who's standing in another line. They find each other's eyes. Say goodbye that way. Uh, then they went off to the gas chambers. The films you saw, the uh, films of the extermination camps that they showed you during the trial? Did you cry for that frightened little girl spirit? Me. Father? Mother? No. Have you ever cried for anybody? No. Never? Once. When? When did you cry? Where? Why? Who? What did you cry for, Spear? Adolf Hitler. All right, you men. I want your attention. I've been told this isn't going to take too long. But if you have to go to the latrine, tell your guard. If you can wait, wait. They'll be sending for you one at a time. They'll take you direct up to the courtroom floor. After you've received your sentence, your guard will escort you back to your cell. There you will gather your personals, and no matter what kind of sentence you drew, you will be transferred either to the upper tier or the lower tier. Smoke them if you've got them. look well in a carefree, happy-go-lucky country like this. How wide's that? Oh, uh, I actually forgot. Carl, how wide is... Uh, 400 feet wide, three miles long. What have you done with the Anhalter and Potsdam railroad stations? Oh, I put them over there, south of Tempelhof. The dome. Will be 825 feet in diameter. Approximately 410,000 square feet below it. Room for about 150,000 people. A whole new Berlin. All this. Yes. It's madness. Utter madness. One moment he insists I go to Dr. Morell and have a complete physical. And the next minute he tells me he's dying and that I should leave him and find someone younger and healthier. Blondie can't help it if she's not an Alsatian. Just a poor old put who happens not to be a thoroughbred police dog. He won't even have his picture taken with her anymore. He says it hurts his public image. You know what? What? I'm a girl who doesn't give a damn about the public. He makes a prisoner out of everyone, doesn't he? 
This is the new Reich Chancery, the first building to be completed in the new Berlin of the future, and the personal triumph of the furious young architect, Professor Albert Speer, who planned and constructed it in the incredible time of 362 days.
ったのだ。Take it off again until victory is secured, or I will not survive the outcome. He's expecting you. Smith. Oh, Dr. Todd. Hadors. Uh, now. He asked me to tell you that there's simply no way he will have time for you today. Tomorrow? I'm sorry. Is there anything I can do? Do you know what these are? I'll tell you what they are. They're draft records. Artists, painters, performers. Look. See? See what I'm doing? Those men don't exist for the draft boards any longer. I need them more at home than I do in the army. Borman, I can't tolerate anyone ignoring my orders. I won't tolerate it. Not even from you. I must have, I insist upon, absolute obedience at all times from everyone. Now, why, in the name of God, did you take it upon yourself to go over to Benderstrasse, and I've got it right here, here we are, and place yourself and your entire technical staff at the disposal of the high command of the army. Come on, come on. Why? I want to do whatever I can. I'm a German. I... We're at war. You are at peace. I'm at war. I'm going to tell you this just once. The war's over. The Poles are beaten. The British and the French, they're too feeble to fight. And just what the hell do you think you can do for the army that they can't do for themselves? I discussed using some of my men to widen roads, rebuild bridges. General Frum thought it was an excellent idea. To hell with General Frome! Where's that letter? Did you write the letter? Where is it? Is a copy? Yes, my sir. Now, this is the letter you sent to him. Yes, my sir. Look at it! Did you receive that letter? Yes. Yes. All right. You ignored it. I misunderstood it. He wrote it down! It's right there on the paper! It's clear to me. It ought to be clear to you. In my name, you were ordered not to undertake any missions. For the army or anyone else. I was quite confident you'd approve of my actions. You can be quite confident that I don't approve of any actions that will interfere with my plans for the reconstruction of this city. You handle the building, Spear. Let me worry about the wars. Woman is entrusted in the life of a nation with a great task. The care of man, soul, body, and mind and the care of his children. It is the mission of women to minister in the home and in her profession to the needs of life from the first moment of man's existence to the last. Her mission in marriage is to bear his children, to be his comrade, his helper, his womanly complement. This is the right of women in the new Germany. You may dress now, Frosbier. 
am delighted to tell you that you are very healthy. And very pregnant, Frau Speer. You have two, three, four children now. Two boys, two girls. Well, do you subscribe to the Sturma? No. I recommend the party magazine to every patient coming through here. How else can you know that a woman in German life performs her most important task by producing future party leaders and soldiers? Our Führer tells us that quite often. So he does. This is incredible. After your last child, you were entitled to the bronze medal. You never applied for it. Well, I must have forgotten, Frau Doctor. It is a great honor. The medal tells the world of your contribution to the Third Reich. You must apply for it, Frau Speer. One must not create a bad impression. Did you by any chance read the Beobachter today? No, I'm afraid I did not. It carried a full page of... Do you have any sons, Frau Doctor? I have no children, Frau Speer. A full page of paid death notices. I read every one of them. For his beloved Führer and father at land, my only son, Hans, age 22, fell on September 20th, 1939, in the Battle of Kutno in Poland. It was signed Mother. You know, it's, it's amazing, isn't it, what the human mind can retain. I, I, I had no intention of memorizing that. None at all. Um, by the way, do you know where Kutno is? No. Neither do I. I don't, I don't believe it's on the map yet. A woman is entrusted in the life of the nation with a great task. May I ask you another question, Frau Yes? Soul, body and mind. You? And the care of his children. It is the mission yes. of women to minister in the... Did the Sturmer suggest that too? To it was my own thought. The first moment of man's existence. You may go now, Frau Speer. A mission in... Heil Hitler. Frau Speer. Yes. I said, Heil Hitler. I heard you, Frau Doctor. His womanly compliment. This is the right of women in the new journey. Where did they bomb us, Hespia? They're trying to win. Never mind that now. Don't they know they can't win by bombing our homes? Maybe we're bombing their homes too, hmm? No, Herr Hentager. Our newspapers say not. We'd never do such a thing, then. Only military objectives. It's the law! German people only want peace. All of us only want peace. Why won't they make peace? Why won't they make peace? Why won't they make peace? 
Why won't they make me? Why won't they make me? It's over. Why won't they make me? We haven't done anything wrong. to be very quiet these days. We're supposed to be a lot of things these days. <laughs> I hear you resigned from the ministry. My relationship with the little doctor has not been too good lately. However, I leave him with his wife, this marriage. I've been promoted. I'm the new Gauleiter at Breslau. The Fuhrer appointed me. Congratulations. I'm going home, Speer. Yeah, at least near home. I'm from Lauban in Lower Silesia. My mother and father are still living there. He's a miller, 82 years old, and he still works every day. Doesn't understand any of this. I'm not sure I do either anymore. Oh, Herr Speer, I know this is your appointment. Party leader Leitgen and I would like to prevail on you to allow us just a few moments to deliver this very important letter to the Fuhrer. My Führer, this is a letter from the Deputy Führer Hess. He ordered us to deliver it personally. Bowman! I want Bowman, where is he? Bowman, where the hell are you when I want you? Get Goebbels going, him and I'll I want them in here right now. I want all private guests confined to the upper floors. And put those two under arrest! Hess went to England to personally ask Winston Churchill to join us against Russia! Good almighty God! What has the man got in his mind? Doesn't he know that ways that wife of his? I know it. I know that's what's behind it. I'm glad I never married Spear, I can tell you that. He's been behaving strangely all year, very strangely, a dozen times. He's absolutely insisted on seeing to it that he personally informs me of some very unpleasant matter in great detail. He just lay it on my desk, then he'd step back and he'd just wait there. With all those great teeth of his, I want to ask you something, Spear. Who is going to believe that I didn't pull him in that plane and send him to England? Who's going to believe this whole thing isn't some part of an intrigue? I can tell you who's going to be the first man on this telephone. It's going to be the Japanese ambassador. And what am I going to tell him? Yes. Deputy Fiona Hess has parachuted into Scotland. He's in the hands of the British authorities. They won't let him see Churchill yet. Hey, now! Finish! That's it! The office of Deputy Fiona is forever abolished. There will be a new office and a new man to fill it. Gentlemen, I give you the director of the party chancellery. One moment, please. Rice Minister Todd is calling from the Führer's headquarters in Rustenburg. You want to get into this war? What? How many men do you have in your organization? 65,000. Listen to me. The Russians have burned everything. Every house, every farm, every barn. Worst of all, the railroad system is a shambles. It will have to be rebuilt. 
I want you to go to Russia, see what you can do about the situation, then meet me here at headquarters. Heil Hitler. How did you go in Russia? Cold. I went there to build railroads, but all I managed to do was flounder in the snow. <laughs> the Fuhrer is most anxious to see you. Unfortunately, he's in a conference with Reich Minister Todd at the moment. He'll call you when he's finished. I'll show you to your quarters. I knew you were waiting to see him. You must be exhausted. He wouldn't let me go. And if you find him in one of his rottener moods, you can thank me for it. I had the indelicacy to explain that our men are freezing to death out there. I've never seen such misery. These Russians are... You're next. I hear you're headed for Berlin. I'm taking off at 0800 tomorrow. Fly with me. We'll talk. Good. I want to call at 0700. The Fiora will see you now. Yes, I know it's unpopular to proceed with civilian construction under the duress of war. But that resentment will disappear. When all the buildings we planned on Adolf Hitler plots are completed, it will be my presence in those buildings. The fact that I walked and talked and worked in them that will provide inspiration for generations to come. What is your impression of Dr. Todd? Dr. Todd is a very capable and learned man. Sad, backlocked. Too many figures, no imagination. The man cannot look beyond the formula. Don't let him talk you into any more wild trips like this Russian thing again, Spear. The man's a defeatist. He demoralizes people. I won't tolerate that attitude from anyone. Oh, tell Dr. Todd I won't be flying with him in the morning. Must get some rest. Of course. Yes. The spear here. Repeat that, please. Dr. Todd's plane's crashed. He's been killed. The Fiora will see you at one o'clock sharp. You'll replace Dr. Todd immediately. I appoint you Reich Minister of Armaments. My Fuhrer, I'm not at all certain I can handle such an assignment. I'm certain. I have every confidence in you. Yes? The uh, Reichsmarshal is here. He says it's urgent. All right. I told Conrad Hasselman you would call him at the Ministry, so he's expecting you. He'll tell you more. Right, Marshal Goring. First, I must offer my condolences. Secondly, I would like to suggest that I take over Dr. Tot's ministry. Within the framework of the four-year plan, Reich Minister Speer is assuming all of Dr. Todd's offices as of this moment.
Uh, right, Minister. The body will arrive at Anhalter Station tomorrow at one o'clock. There will be a brief greeting ceremony there, then the funeral will take place in the mosaic room at the Chancellery. I spoke with the Air Ministry. I have the preliminary report on the Reich Minister's death. The plane exploded approximately 65 feet above the runway as it was taking off. There was a series of explosions. It disintegrated. No further measures are requisite or intended. Does that mean this is the extent of the investigation? You can safely presume that, yes, Herr Reich Minister. May I say something, Herr Reich Minister? In the trying days to come, I hope I shall be able to serve you loyally, as I have served Herr Dr. Tart. The Italian ambassador talks a lot. He just couldn't wait to tell me that the foreign press are intimating that I'm to be kicked out as head of the four-year plan because of your appointment. I've heard those same intimations, Herr Reichsmarschall, and I assure you they distress me as much as they distress you. Regardless of that distress, which I'm sure affects you very keenly, I'm also informed, and my God, how this world is full of informers, that you have composed a new organizational plan for your ministry. That is true. And that you have insisted upon the written approval for those plans from all the heads of industry and of the armed services. I regard that as outrageous, Spear. Then I'll withdraw it. My second reason of coming here is to explain that anything I'd like to accomplish can only be done with your complete approval. I'd never infringe on your position as the head of our economy. All my endeavors remain subordinate to your wishes and desires within the framework of the four-year plan. I've made that perfectly clear. And to whom have you made all this so perfectly clear? The press. I told them there will never be a friction or crisis between you and I, only Cooperation and understanding. <laughs> I don't know whether you're a clever liar or simply naive. And I wonder if I care one way or the other at this stage of the game. I have my own press agency, Herr Rice Minister. You should have let them handle it. Drink? Field Marshal Milch is here. Last year, President Roosevelt asked the American aircraft industry for 50,000 airplanes. I'm quoting from the broadcast. Of course. They said it couldn't be done, but they did it. This year, he's asking them to produce 60,000 planes. They said, aye, aye, sir. Next year, he'll ask for uh, 100,000 planes. Will he get them, Herr Reich Minister? He'll get them, Herr Field Marshal. We won't survive if we allow factories like this to be idle for one minute. 
Our lighter Sauckel has accepted the post of Commissioner General, and he agrees with me that these labor problems, which you have so dramatically outlined to me, Herr Reich Minister, can be easily solved by utilizing labor forces from occupied countries. Gauleiter Salko has my complete authority to bring those workers into the Reich by the fastest possible means. Satisfactory? Yes, my Führer. It is my only concern to staff our factories with the necessary manpower. Well? men come from the east, the occupied countries, mostly Czechs and Poles. Yes, my dear. Will I be married? Married? Why, yes, I would think so. One day. What day? What day? When will I be married? When you find you love another person very, very much. And life seems improbable without that person. Will I live to be married? Yes, I would hope so. Will the bombs kill me?
project like the B2 program requires absolute secrecy. I agree with the Rice Marshal. The simplest way to ensure complete secrecy for the B2 project is to use my people in the workforce. These prisoners in my concentration camps are completely cut off from all outside contact. They don't even receive any mail. Well, I'm concerned with the technical aspects. If we can be sure... Yes, that... what about technicians? That would be no problem. I don't really care where they come from. I want manpower. Then I suggest you staff the entire project with these people. But no Jews. Soldiers? Are wounded from the Russian front. I spoke with General Paulus early this morning. He I think you should all know that Prime Minister Churchill and the President of the United States are wintering in Casablanca at this very moment. President Roosevelt has just announced that he and his friend will accept nothing less from me than an unconditional surrender. Right, Minister, my pure. For months you've been urging me to declare a total war with all of industry and all of our economy. Under these circumstances, Herr Reich Minister Speer! I promise you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and especially Mr. Roosevelt and Mr. Churchill, they can expect nothing less from me than total war from here on out. I wish President Roosevelt had consulted with me before he made his statement at Casablanca today. I doubt if Mr. Roosevelt is in the mood these days to consult with anyone on the German general staff. Nevertheless, I would have pointed out to him how useful two words like unconditional surrender can be to a man like Dr. Goebbels. The doctor would certainly point out to our countrymen that the consequences of defeat are a great deal less palatable than the realities of war. May I be frank? Please. We've been at war 42 months now, and we are losing on all fronts. You know it, I know it, and even he knows it. Now, Dr. Goebbels will ask more people to die, and he'll ask you to manufacture more weapons, more machine guns, more tanks, more guns, and gather more manpower. I'm suggesting that we have all been taken in by that gutter snipe of an amateur general. Who has never even asked for a count of the dead. Field Marshal Milch, you'll realize who you're talking to. Herr Reich Minister Speer, do you realize who you are working for?
of ingression. There's no sort of ingression, I reckon, is there? Where do they sleep? Right in here. I reckon, is there? Close to their work. They take their meals here as well? Yes, I reckon, is there? How often do they eat? One meal a day. What do they eat? These people receive, by way of the SS manager, proper food rations somewhat corresponding to those in the Reich, as approved by the Reich Minister of Foods. That is policy. Policy. Show me the proper ration for today. Of course, Herr Reich Minister. Sanitary facilities? Yes, Herr Reich Minister. Who are you? Who is this man? Where is he from? Ot Kudive. Yeah, he's a lot here. Welcher of your TTPS, yes. He is Russian, Herr Reich Minister. A few Czechs and Poles, but mostly Russians. He's a sick Russian. What's the name of your camp physician? You do have a doctor here. No, Herr Reich Minister. This facility, like the others, is serviced by a medical crew. Frequently? Twice a month. What's the name of the doctor in that medical crew? I would like to say... Kamla. There's no doctor in the medical crew, Herr Reichsminister. Policy? Policy. Яшчэ, господин Райхминистр, пожалуйста. Заднис, зволоч. Yes. What did he say? He suggested that you eat it, Herr Reichsminister. I suggest also you wear these rags. You feel the cold. You are with fever. I'm human being. I'm not animal. You and you. These people bring me here from my wife, my child. You finish my life in this place, sick with garbage like that. What man? What man are you, Ger Reich Minister? What world you prepare for your master race? Composer, get the car. Herr Sarko. Yes, Herr Reich Minister. You set the policy? I set the policy. Reset it. I want this mine in operation by the end of this week. I want more workers. I want them right away. Feed them, clothe them, and make sure you meet my production schedule. Quite clear. It is my obligation to translate the Führer's will, intentions, and orders into action. I will provide you all the workers you need. I will not provide them luxuries. I have just given you a direct order. I expect you to carry it out. Herr Reich Minister, I remind you, I'm under the command of Reich Marshal Goring. Herr Commissioner, I will not hesitate to ask the Reich Marshal to have you shot. Too much power, you're too ambitious, threaten everyone, and you're an enemy of the party. Bormann. Bormann? Ah, yes. Beautiful conversationist. Especially when it comes to you when he's had a few drinks with his friends. Which friends? The Reich Marshal, who's quite certain you wish to succeed Hitler as head of state. 
Sir Quinlan was quite certain that you would have the right marshal to have him shot. You know what I've just done, Spear? I've warned you. I don't know how much good it'll do, but I've warned you. I never did have much chance to warn Dr. Todd. I have to immobilize this leg, and I have to immobilize you. I know you're a very busy man, and I know you don't have the time, but I most seriously assure you, you must take the time and cure yourself before this condition becomes unmanageable. My dear son, your mother and I have followed the reports of your illness in the newspapers. They say you are recovering rapidly. I hope that information is reliable. Very little I see in print is reliable these days. However, what I see in the skies is another matter. The British drop their bombs by night, the Americans by day, almost unresisted by the great air Reich Marshal of the Great Girths. Soon, I'm sure, every major city in Germany will be in rubble. Dr. Goebbels does not admit these truths in any of his papers, nor does he admit that all of the genius of Germany is being destroyed. We've been changed from a nation of poets and builders and thinkers into a den full of murderers and hangmen. I will never understand how the people of this nation told themselves that he ever had any program beyond his hope for destruction of the world. Love from your father. Uh, take him, my own. Oops. We might as well be led by a blind traffic policeman. You have no idea of the havoc he's creating and the German blood he's pumping into the ground. Why hasn't he been shot? What did you say? Why hasn't somebody shot him? I've heard of vague plans to do just that, but they all stop right at the oath of allegiance we all took. As far as I'm concerned, no one's approached me, but I'm too old to get involved in plots and takeovers. But no reasonable man seeing the Fuhrer every day but still, uh, take that oath seriously. You're testing me. Yes, I'm testing you. And I'm testing you. Everyone's testing everyone these days. There's a man in your office, Dorsch, who used to work for Tot. Head of his central office? Yes, he's the party liaison man. He reports directly to the Fuhrer. I know. It's his job to make up dossiers on everyone in your organization, including you. Be careful of when you go back to work. I'm not going back. I found my wife and children again. We've been together for the first time in years. I'm not going back. I'm resigning. No, you aren't. You can't. It's too late for luxurious thinking like that. You can't resign and leave this country to his whims and mercies. One minute he's talking about a new weapon we all know won't happen, and the next minute he's talking about leaving them a scorched earth we all know could happen. Now we must stop him, so there's something left to carry us through the period after the war. Hey, Dr. Diedrich at headquarters. Yes, I've got it. One moment, Steve. Yes, Dr. Goebbels speaking. Well, put him on. Assassination? Is he all right? I am unhurt, and I am well. That is first. Second, I want you to know that a very small clique of irresponsible, ambitious, senseless, stupid officers concocted a plot to eliminate me. Several of my true and loyal comrades were seriously wounded, and one has died. 
I received only minor scratches, bruises, and burns. From every ten conspirators, the Gestapo will extract the names of one hundred more until German ground is hot and soft with running German blood. I will root out these traitors and destroy them and their women and their children. I, your Führer, will live on to change the world while these betrayers will be killed like cattle, unworthy of my greatness. Kalkenbrunner. Forgive me, my leg's been bothering me again. Vexum. I have no wish to add to your discomfort, but we have discovered that you were on Count von Stauffenberg's calendar for lunch, July the 20th, the day of the attempted assassination. I was on my own calendar that day to speak at a business luncheon. Did you discover that too? Of course. But it is not inconceivable that Stauffenberg or someone else approached you. No, it isn't. This is the organizational plan for the post-conspiracy government. As you see, a great general staff was to coordinate the three branches of the armed services. Do you follow me? I am following you. Subordinate to this staff was the commander-in-chief of the Home Army, who was also to be Supreme Armaments Chief. You still follow me? Yes. Turn the page now. I believe if you go all the way down to the personnel they anticipated, see the boxes? Yes. You'll find your own name neatly printed there in block letters. Minister of Armaments in the new government, had they succeeded? Yes. There's a question mark right after it. You noticed that? I noticed that right away. Herr Kaltenbrunner, I am a busy man. I've been working on a feeble and insecure speech about loyalty to my staff. Tomorrow, 12 o'clock sharp, I invite you to attend, if you please. Right now, you simply must excuse me. The enemy has struck us at one of our weakest points, fuel supply. If they persist, we will no longer have any production that is worth mentioning. Our one hope is... Our one hope is? Our one hope is that the enemy has an Air Force General Staff as stupid as our own. You want me to send this to the Führer? Just that way. You have your own plane now? Yes, I have a plane. And a pilot standing by at all times. And a train? Train, private plane, private phone, private this, private that, private car. Why? And plenty of fuel to take you anywhere you want to go. Only right for a Reich minister. I suppose so. I know so. I've always given you good advice. Always. One last bit of advice, Herr Reich Minister. If anyone asks you to take your private plane or your private train and inspect a concentration camp in Upper Silesia, don't. Don't go to Auschwitz under any circumstances.
transmitted to all commanders in all areas. But I want to emphasize um, all areas and Gao districts. No German is to inhabit land occupied by the enemy. Anyone who does so, any wretch will find himself in a desert devoid of all the amenities of civilization. I repeat, I re-emphasize, I want everything essential to the maintenance of life. Um, Imgard. Imgard, yes. Destroyed. All industrial plants, all gas and water and power, electrical works, telephone exchanges, I want them blown up, destroyed completely. No more ringing. Dismantle them. Cut the telegraph wires, the relay offices, blow them up, and the um, spare parts, destroy all spare parts. Two, how old is she? Sixteen. Sweet sixteen. I want all the cows, all the chickens, all the food supplies destroyed. I want all the farms burned down, all the livestock. That's it. Kill the cows. That's what I want you to do. Kill all the cows. Let General Patton and his killers come through and smell their rotting carcasses. And pigs, kill all the pigs, and flood the mines, all of them. I want them unusable for the next hundred, a thousand years. Tear down the castles, blow them up, the churches, the monuments, the opera houses, the theatres. Level them, flatten them to the ground. I don't want one stalk of German wheat to feed the enemy. Burn all the fields, all the wheat, not one German mouth to give him information, not one German hand to help him. When the enemy gets here, I want every road to be blocked, every bridge destroyed. I want nothing but death, annihilation, and hatred to meet him. The demands of the Fuhrer cannot be ignored or postponed. The Gestapo will instantly arrest the irresponsible official for acting contrary to an order from the Führer and be taken to a concentration camp. So, we shall have his scorched earth, no matter what. I've been thinking about killing him. Have you? Yes. I'm still thinking about it. Are you? I think we touched on that subject once before. How? Poison gas, taboon, in the air intake valve of the bunker. Very good. Very bad. Yesterday, they put a 10-foot chimney on top of the air intake valve. And there's a guard. And of course, you are terribly, terribly redeemed. You know what you are, Spear? Hitler's unrequited love. And you simply wouldn't know what to do in a world that didn't include Adolf Hitler. You know, I think it's a splendid time to start looking for some civilian clothes. There's little sense in devastating and destroying buildings and territories. The Fuhrer has every intention of reconquering. We all know, Herr Reich Minister, that's not going to happen. Just what is this all about? It's unreasonable to destroy all facilities it would take to survive in a post-war world. supposed to do about all those orders I get every day about demolition. Interpret them in a merciful sense for you, Marshal. Merciful? <laughs> As is Reich's minister, I'm ordering you 
to withhold any response to those orders until you receive confirmation from my office. Will you withhold until you hear from me? How many children do you have? Six. I've got three of my own. All gaulators and field commanders. All right, Spear. For the kids. It says here he's the Reich Minister, Her General. He is. Well, Speer, you're a long way from Berlin. I have the damnedest bunch of orders from there. Keitel wants me to blow up all the bridges and evacuate all the people in my district. I can't do that. I hope you're not here to tell me I should. I'm here to tell you that if the Fuhrer calls you to account, you can say that I told you the order had been cancelled. Come on, sir. Back up. We all know the Führer is still holding something in reserve that he'll use at the last minute, and then the turning point will come. It's only a trap, isn't it? He's letting the enemy come this far into our country. We, we still have a special weapon, don't we? A weapon that'll change everything. You must rest, Albert. You look very tired. I'm afraid I have no time. Are the Americans coming? Yes. They're in Mannheim now. Heidelberg has been declared an open city that can be surrendered without a fight. Yes, come in. Must you go? I've been ordered back to Berlin. By him? Yes. Are you still the lickspittle of that Austrian can I? Hardly, Father. He's taken away all my authority. Stay here. Let the Americans arrest you. He's having people shot for nothing at all these days. No. I have to go back.
Fjorda's been waiting. You drove round the countryside and told the Ruhr Garleiters not to carry out my demolition orders, that the war is lost. Yes. You admit it? Yes. You know the consequences for actions like that? Yes, I do. If you weren't my architect, I would have you shot. I remind you, I'm not your architect. I'm your Reich's minister. You can do whatever you think is necessary. Come in here. You're going on sick leave. You're overworked. You're ill. You never did fully recover. I'll have somebody else run your office. No. No. You are saying no to me. I'm not going on sick leave. If you don't want me as your minister, you can dismiss me the same way you appointed me. I am your Führer. I insist you go on sick leave immediately. As long as I'm in office, I'll conduct the affairs of the ministry. And I'm not sick. I'm in sound condition. Get out! If you can convince yourself that the war isn't lost, you can continue to run your office. I will not tell you something I don't believe. You could hope that we haven't lost. Certainly you're still able to hope. You have 24 hours to answer me. Frau Reichminister. He's picking up his phone now. Now, listen to me carefully. I've ordered a car for you. It'll be there tomorrow morning at 7. Have the children ready. Shh. Take what you can and leave. I've arranged for you to go to Kappel. It's out of the way, near no large city. You'll be safe there. And you? I'll be all right. You, no, you're in, you're in danger, aren't you? I can tell. Marguerite, I know what I'm doing. I haven't known for a very long time. But I know now. I, I have to hurry. Don't forget. I, I love you very, very much. Albert? Albert? Dusseldorf. My mother lives there. I have a married sister there, too. Are they well? Yes, they're well. I'd feel less strained if you were to make plans to join them there as quickly as possible. I've seen that concern on your face for me many times. And before you ask what is to become of me, let me tell you, I was in Heidelberg a few days ago, where I grew up. And just as it was when I was a very young boy, the soil was spicy and fragrant. It's springtime, memory. It's a time for living and growing. Well, my Führer, I stand unreservedly behind you. Then all's well. If I stand unreservedly behind you, you must again entrust me with the authority to implement your orders. Of course. Would you be good enough to sign this document?
safeguard power plants, gas works, food processing plants. I wondered what you talked me into last time. And now I'm wondering what I'm going to let you talk me into this time. I'm here to assure you that by abiding by that order, you're not disregarding the order of your commander-in-chief. You know, I think you're talking about high treason. You have a piece of paper with a signature on it. I won't ask you how you got it. You know, I always thought you'd go down in that hole with him and stay until the last round of ammunition has been fired. I'm not so sure that still won't happen. At any rate, thank you for ordering me not to carry out any demolitions. Someone wants to say goodbye. Oh. Albert. May I... May I present my family? This is Helga and Hilde and... Oh, no, no, they're, they're playing. They're all right. Oh. I'm so glad. I'm so very glad that Harold is safe. Harold is her son by her first husband. I believe it would be better, if it must be, that you end your life here in the capital, as the Führer. I feel the same way. I just wanted to hear your view once more. I shall not fight personally. There's always the chance that I'd only be wounded fall into the hands of the Russians alive. And I don't want my enemies to disgrace my body either. I've given orders that I'm to be cremated. Fraulein Brown wants to depart this life with me. And I'll shoot Blondie beforehand. Believe me, Spear, it is easy for me to end my life. A brief moment, and I'm free of everything. Liberated from this painful existence. The ammunition clip is sent into the chamber this way. Once it is in, pull the slide back, release the safety. And take your positions. Remember, sight slowly, carefully. That's right. Now ready, aim. Fire! <laughs> Reload. I have a courier plane at my disposal. There's still time. No. 
No, I'll stay here, right here, with him. We have to stick together in case there are some lusty, old-fashioned peasants in the Red Army. Commence firing. There is something I must say to you. I countermanded your orders. I deceived you. I didn't carry out any demolitions. I prevented them. We'll talk about this another time. Yes. The Fuhrer died this afternoon at 1500. <laughs> Albert Speer is condemned to 20 years of reclusion. Albert Speer to 20 years of Zuchthaus for Urteil. Albert Speer to 20 years imprisonment. Albert Speer to 20 years of Zuchthaus for Urteil. Albert Speer получил 20 лет в заключении. Albert Speer, zu 20 Jahren Zuchthaus verurteilt. 
Albert Speer to 20 years imprisonment. Albert Speer to 20 Jahren Zuchthaus verurteilt. This is a list of titles compiled in cooperation with the American Library Association, giving additional information about Albert Speer and Nazi Germany. Adolf Hitler by John Toland. Berlin Diary by William L. Shirer. Hitler by Joachim C. Fest. The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich by William L. Shirer. Check your library or bookstore for these and other titles on this subject. Thank you.